this Excel tutorial, I will be discussing the basics of formulas and functions. Now, there's a technical difference between formulas and functions, but most people use the terms interchangeably, so don't worry about it for the moment. Um, the main thing to remember is that all formulas and functions start with the equal sign. Once you type the equal sign, then Excel knows that you're trying to create a formula and it will help you with prompts and drop down boxes. So very important to remember that point. These are the formulas that are very commonly used. So uh, we'll just discuss these just to get you up and running with formulas and to give you some confidence. Now I've set up this, it's a rainfall chart or part of a rainfall chart just so that we've got some figures to work with for our examples. Now the first thing I want to talk about is just basic formulas. If you just take any square and you type the equal sign and then you say uh, I want to know what 2 plus 4 and then you press enter that'll give you the answer 2 plus 4 is 6. So let's delete that. So the same goes for if you wanted to divide. Uh, you say 4 divided by, and that's the divide symbol in Excel. 2 enter equals 2. So far, so good. And if you wanted to subtract, you'd go equals 4 minus 2 enter and there's your answer and similarly with multiplication we put equals two times that's the times symbol for excel three and we press enter here we go two times three is six who would have known um, and those are the basics of uh, what you can do in terms of formulas but there are, now this is where the difference between formulas and functions comes in. If you do what we've just done and type in your own formula, that's a formula. If you use a preformed formula within Excel, that's a function. So we're going to do that now. Let's say you wanted to add up all these figures. You could go equals sum, and you see here it's prompting me. I'll choose that one. If you double click, your choice. It starts the whole thing for you, puts the parenthesis there and everything, so that's good. Now if I wanted to add that one, then you put a comma and that one, and then you put a comma and say that one, and you, you can either close your brackets manually or you just press enter and it closes it for you. And there we go, that's the total doing it that way. So let's get rid of that total. Now an easier way to use the sum function if you wanted to uh, add up all the figures in a row is just click where you want the answer. Obviously start with your equal sign and then start typing sum. It'll again prompt you, double click your selection, gets you started. And now you select the whole field like that up to there, let go, press enter, that will close parenthesis for you and add everything up and that's the total there. Now if we wanted to extrapolate the sum formula down all of these columns, because we want to sum all of those, so you could just go and you see this little square on the end here, once your arrow turns black you can drag down to the bottom let go and what it does is replicates the first formula uh, but changing it for the different uh, cells. Next we want to talk about maximum and minimum so we'll get on to that. Let's find the maximum value within that range so let's put that there and we go equals max just double click and it's looking for which cells you want to find the maximum in there press enter 
And there we have it. The maximum is 51. And if you just scan that, you can see that's correct. Now we could do the same with minimum. Put that there. Equals. Type, begin typing minimum. When, it, when you get the drop down menu, double click. Select the range that you're talking about. And enter. And there we have that. Now we're getting on to more complicated stuff. And next we're going to talk about the average. That's getting a bit fancy now. Let's just say we wanted to find an average. And by the way, we can do the same here and just extrapolate those functions all the way down. Just wait until you get the little black cross, drag down, and there we have it. Now we get on to more complicated stuff. Um, we're going to do an average this time. Um, so now you could start with equals average, double click. Now it wants the range that you want to average. So you drag, you can drag that across there like that and press enter. And you'll see now that the average, even though there's only 10 columns here, the average turns out at 14.3. Now the problem there is that with the average function, it's counting only those with values in them. If there's no value, uh, then it doesn't count it. So then your average will be wrong. Now in order to get Excel to use all the cells in the range, including the blank ones, in the average, we have to combine two functions. And I'll show you how to do that now. The first function we have to use is the sum function. So we go equals, start typing sum, select it out of the drop down, double click, you get you started. Then you take your range, which we want all of those to be included. Now, close brackets, and that uh, gives us the total for the range. Now, we have to divide that total by the number of cells in the range. Now, to get that, so first of all, we'll put our dividing sign, which in Excel is your forward slash, and we're going to use a new term now. Uh, it's called countif. So I'll explain that in a minute. So that gets us started and then Excel very kindly gives us uh, some prompts on what we need to do next. The next thing we have to do is select the range and put a comma in. So we select the range. There we go. Place our comma. Now it wants the criteria. Now in order to get it to count all the cells, including the blanks, we have to use uh, the following criteria. Now we put that in inverted commas. And if it's less than or greater than zero, close inverted commas and close your brackets, then that should count all the cells, including the blanks. So let's try that. Press enter. Here we go. Now, we know there's... 10 months included here. The total is 100, so if you divide 100 by 10, you should get 10, and that's correct. There's the average. So, and then again, we can just go to the bottom right hand corner of our first cell with the formula in it and drag it down, let go, and it copies the form formula all the way down, adjusting, of course, for the different cells. Our next item is count and comparing it to count if. So you've already been introduced to count if, but we'll just show you the difference between count and count if. If we just going to go down here, if we say equals count and we double click. And it wants a range. So let's just take all the cells. These will be, there's 150 cells here, 10 by 15. 
and press enter. Can you see that? It's only 30, uh, even though there's 150 cells there. But then if we do what we did a moment ago, and we go equals count if, double click, then we put the range in, which is all of those. So we know there's 150 cells there in total. Put a comma, open inverted commas, greater or less than zero, close inverted commas, close brackets, enter. Now you see it's counting every cell. So that's the difference between count and count if, and those are very uh, useful things to know. Uh, another point to note about the count function is that it won't count blanks, but if I were to put in a value of zero, it will count that. So let's have a look there. Can you see that? And the interesting thing is it's lowered this count by one because I put a value in there. So because I told it to count blanks uh, and not zero. So if I put a zero in there, that one goes up by one because it'll count it and that one will go down by one. So all those little tricks you have to bear in mind when you're constructing a formula. The if command will compare two criteria and give an answer according to what you instructed to do. So if we go here now and we want to find out uh, if this is high or low rainfall, we can set a criteria. So we'll go equals if. Double click and then it gives you the whole story here. So we've got to put in a logical test first. So let's say we want to check the total, year to date total, if it's greater than, and we can set an arbitrary figure, let's say 20 millimeters. Then we put a comma. And then we've got to say, if it's true, we get we we tell it what to say. So if it's true, and because it's text, we're getting so we'll put it in inverted commas. If it's true, we'll call it high rainfall and put a comma there. Then if it's false, we'll call it sorry, inverted commas first low. Rainfall and then close the brackets and enter. So now this was a hundred, so that's obviously more than twenty, so it's high. But now if we do this, get our little black cross again and extrapolate all these functions down to the bottom. There, it's going to tell us which are high months or which are high days and which are low days of rainfall. Now just a final word on where to find formulas and functions on Excel. So firstly, uh, it might be worthwhile just showing you uh, the auto sum and auto average functions. So if we wanted to use the auto sum function, which is an automatic summing, you just click where you want the answer to be. And you come up here and you see the auto sum. You can just click on order sum if you want sum, but if you want to see all the formulas in the auto sum category, uh, there they are there. So just giving an example of order sum, if we click sum now, it is assuming that I just want to sum that one box, which is not right. I want to sum that whole column. So you just drag it up, let go, and then press enter. And there we are, it's summed those figures there. So similarly, if we wanted to count, we could count numbers and then just 
put in our field, enter, there we are, it's counted numbers, and as usual, it doesn't count the blanks, it just counts where there is a value. So that's that thing. Now you can also find formulas here, and this is mind-boggling, when you press this option, you can see the formulae have been divided into categories. There's your auto sum which we've just used. Then we've got your recently used formulae. Then you've got financial, logical, text, blah, 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 mathematical trick. So it is a very powerful program. And once you get to know it, you'll find it an absolute asset. So that's the basics of formulas and functions. And that should give you confidence to start expanding on spreadsheets you might already have started and get a bit more confidence to be able to do a bit more with your spreadsheets instead of just adding and subtracting and dividing. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And we'd love to hear from you. If you have any comments or questions, please scroll down to the bottom of the video and leave us a comment there. Thank you very much for watching.